Good morning and welcome back to Margin. This morning we're going to talk about the eight steps to buying a vehicle with margin. So let's jump right into it. So in this theme on transportation, we've gone through the process of looking at how to find the book value of your vehicle, how to find the market value of your vehicle, what kind of vehicles to buy, what warranties to look for, what kind of servicing uh, benefits a vehicle can come with, as well as a number of different aspects of uh, depreciation and looking at how to buy a vehicle intentionally removing emotion. So we've gone through all of these different components, all these different episodes related to transportation. So now I want to basically put these together and look at the eight steps to buying a vehicle with margin. So buying a vehicle with margin in mind basically means that you are buying a vehicle below its market value you are driving that vehicle for a period of time, maybe improving it along the way, and then you are selling it at market value. So it's the old adage of buying low, selling high versus what most people do, which is buy high, sell low, and then they take that negative equity and apply it to the next vehicle. So the purpose here is for your the asset that is typically the second largest asset that people purchase for it not to be something that uh, that steals margin from you and instead helps you to uh, responsibly uh, you know commute and responsibly uh, take care of the things you need to take care of without driving a car into the ground or trading it in every two to three years and taking that negative equity and applying it to the next vehicle. So this is important. This is an important process to go through uh, just because of the fact that it's so countercultural, so counter to how people typically operate when it comes to vehicles. So looking at these eight steps will help ensure that you're building margin into that purchase. So the first component comes down to purchase. It's important for you to purchase that vehicle with the end in mind, thinking through how you are going to negotiate that vehicle and how you are then going to pay under market value or trade in value and then be able to have some margin built into that vehicle. What not to do is to pay MSRP to, uh, to, to pay that retail price with the add-ons, with the accessories and everything else and, and find yourself immediately upside down on that vehicle. The second step is to buy used, even if it's slightly used, but buy used so that someone else can take that depreciation for you. Do not buy new. I, I don't know how to say that any other way. And I understand that for many people, it's a comfort level of buying a new car, knowing what's happened to it and so on and so forth. But you can do a lot to go through the process of vetting a vehicle to where you can buy a used or slightly used vehicle that you have greater peace of mind on because you have not bought it at full retail and you're not the one writing down that value. So the third step comes down to buying a middle trim level of that vehicle. Do not buy a basic level with the crank windows or buy that premium level uh, that will have a greater depreciation curve because of the initial cost. So it's important for you to look at buying something that has mass market appeal. That is not something that uh, that is going to uh, depreciate quickly because it doesn't have enough options or it has so many options that it has pushed the price up so high that it's unattainable or uh, or is not able to uh, to be sold to the mass market because of. So the fourth component comes down to purchasing. It's important for you to purchase your vehicle, not lease your vehicle. Once you go through the process of running the numbers, you'll know why. It's a lot more expensive to go through a process of leasing your vehicle or renting your vehicle versus buying a vehicle that then you can sell at a later date. So the fifth component comes down to knowing the depreciation curve on that specific vehicle that you're buying. So many people 
don't know how a vehicle is going to depreciate until they go to sell it and realize that they've lost their shirt. It's important for you to go through the process of knowing what the depreciation curve is so that then you're not surprised when you go to sell it what it's worth. It's important for you to look at uh, not just driving the wheels off of that vehicle, driving it until it's salvaged or whatever the case may be, uh, but actually buying it so that you are intentional about maximizing the value at the time of resale. So the sixth component comes down to doing your research and buying from a place of logic, not buying from a place of emotion just because your neighbor bought something, just because you saw a commercial or just because you want something new. But going through the process of buying from a place of strength knowing that you, what you have researched, what you're purchasing is the right purchase for the seasonality of you, your spouse, family accordingly. So making sure that you're buying something that makes sense for you in the season of life you're in. So the seventh component comes down to buying a vehicle that has a clean history, that does not have a salvage title, is not rebuilt, does not have frame damage, isn't bought back by a manufacturer as a lemon, uh, and ideally does not have accidents on it. So buying something that has a clean history will prevent not only uh, uncertainties in regards to the safety of the vehicle, but also uncertainties when it comes to selling that vehicle to the next owner. So eighth component comes down to buying a type of vehicle that is in either a stable or growing sector. So that means that you are buying a crossover, maybe a truck or an SUV, that is stable or growing so that you can keep in mind uh, the fact that if it is stable or it's growing, it's going to have high demand. Therefore, it's going to demand the, uh, the largest return when it comes to selling it and avoiding uh, those, those sectors that are dying or are niches. So those sectors that may be a, a full size sedan, you know, or maybe uh, something along the lines of a full size van or something that, uh, that is declining in its popularity and being mindful of buying a wagon that, uh, that may end up depreciating faster than other vehicles because of the because of the nature of the demand for that vehicle. So an example of applying these eight steps to a vehicle purchase has to do with a 2018 Toyota Tacoma that I bought. As you know, I love Toyota Tacomas and this one in particular, I bought as a 2018 year model in 2018, but as a used vehicle. So I bought it with 5,000 miles. It was a certified pre-owned vehicle through Toyota. It was a dealer vehicle that they let their manager use as their daily driver. And the vehicle was a TRD off-road premium. So four wheel drive, uh, crew cab, short bed, and uh, was kind of the middle of the pack. So it wasn't an SR5 and it wasn't a sport, but it also wasn't a limited or a TRD pro. So it was right in the middle of the pack. Now this was a very nice truck. It had the premium upgrade. So it had leather you know, seats, it had a moonroof, uh, it had side steps and um, you know, a, a, a bed cover and so on and so forth. But I bought this vehicle with uh, the end in mind when, when it came to reselling it at a later date. So I put uh, about 11,000 miles on it before I decided to sell it. And, uh, and I bought the vehicle originally for uh, about $33,200. And, uh, and what I did is I, you know, negotiated that price at that point, there was less, uh, I would say competition for vehicles than there is right now, but I was able to actually negotiate that vehicle. And when I went to sell it, uh, about a year later, I sold it for 37,500. So that gave me a little bit of margin in that vehicle to cover insurance, to cover, uh, you know, fuel, to cover registration fees and so on and so forth. And that's what I'm talking about when it comes to applying these eight steps to go through the process of finding a vehicle that, uh, that you can buy below market value and that you can drive because you do need to utilize a vehicle to commute or for trips or whatever the case may be, 
and then uh, and then to sell that vehicle at a later date at the market value. So the goal here is to build margin into your finances through the purpose of, of making sure you don't lose your shirt on a vehicle. So my call to action today comes down to really evaluating your next vehicle purchase differently. Looking at all of these episodes related to transportation and applying these eight steps to your next purchase to ensure that you are not buying a vehicle high and selling it low. If this information is helpful to you, please do like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're reminded to come back on a daily basis and improve in managing your personal finances. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your day. I'll see you back here tomorrow.